good morning to everyone all i am dr g sham prasad i am the course coordinator for the theory of computation toc uh, <clears throat> now i am going to give the introduction and uh, some important topics on the toc so i would cover uh, co1 co2 co3 and co4 uh, some of the important topics okay, now let us go uh, go to the co1 the co1 uh, we are going to discuss regarding uh, finite automata so types of the finite automata and uh, how to uh, construct the finite automata for the given formal languages okay? okay these are the things we are going to discuss from the co1 okay now uh, as for the chomsky hierarchy the entire formal languages can be divided into four types okay these are called type 0 type 1 type 2 and type 3 okay the type 3 language is nothing but recursive enumerable recursive enumerable languages type one means <coughs> recursively recursive enumerable linear bounded automata finite automata that is regular languages context context can i repeat no <laughs> so as for the chomsky hierarchy entire formal languages can be divided into four types the type 0 type 1 type 2 and type 3 so type uh, type 3 language is nothing but regular languages type 2 means context free languages type 1 means context sensitive languages and type 0 means recursive enumerable languages okay to uh, accept the these languages we used to the the four missions like the finite automata pushdown automata linear bounded automata and turing missions okay there are four types of the languages and four types of the missions here in the theory of computation we are going to discuss or we are going to know what is the relationship between language and mission what is the relationship between the language language and mission okay so type 3 languages so what is the mission compatible to accept the languages type 2 languages what is the compatible mission like that okay so like uh, like this we are going to this uh, know the what are the relationship between the uh, mission and the language actually the finite automata can be divided into finite automata with without output finite automata with output okay in the finite automata with output means dfa nfa finite automata without output means more and mele mission more mission mele mission actually in the finite automata we are going to discuss regarding the these things okay finite automata uh, without output in the sense 
DFA, deterministic finite automata, uh, finite automata, and one more is the non deterministic finite automata. Okay. Now let us discuss what is a finite automata. The general definition of the finite automata is the finite automata consists of the set of states, set of transitions, the transitions from the one state to another state and set of input symbols occurs on the transitions. Okay? This is the general definition for the, the finite automata. Okay? Moreover, the intention of the finite automata mission is to recognize the language, to recognize the language, whether the language is accepted or rejected. Okay? That is the main purpose of the finite automata mission. Okay? The finite automata main purpose of, purpose of the finite automata mission, mission is to recognize the language. Okay? Here, coming to the general definition, general definition and the formal definition. So, the finite automata M can be defined as phi tuples Q sigma delta Q naught and F, okay, where Q equal to set of states, sigma equal to set of input symbols delta equal to transition function the transition function delta is mapping q sigma tends to q in the sense the in, uh, in, uh, input of the transition function is state some input symbol, outcome is the single state. And Q naught equal to initial state and F equal to final state. Okay. This is regarding the, the finite automata. So as I told earlier, the finite automata can be divided into an FA and DFA. Okay. So we can see the finite automata in terms of for DFA or NFA. So this is the DFA, deterministic finite automata, deterministic finite automata. The DFA can be defined M equal to Q sigma delta Q naught and F, where Q equal to set of states, sigma equal to set of input symbols, Next, del, uh, delta equal to transition function, the delta transition function is mapping Q sigma tends to Q and Q naught equal to initial state and F equal to final state. Okay, here uh, for example, <coughs> for example, Q naught, Q1, <laughs> so this is called the DFA, okay, uh, actually the finite automata in the sense as a DFA and FA can be represented transition diagram or transition table. The finite automata can be represented by using the transition diagram or transition table. Okay, this is the transition diagram. Okay, so as we have seen the general definition, okay, the general definition is uh, the finite automata consists of set of states, the set of transitions and set of input symbols the transitions from the one state to another state. Okay? So as I told the uh, general definition, so the finite automata can be represented in terms of the transition diagram, okay? like that, states, Q0, Q1. So here the mission having the two states, input symbols. Okay? So if you 
compare with the m, m equal to actually as for the definition set of q is the set of states. How many states? q0, q1, sigma equal to set of input symbols. Uh, what are the input symbols are? zeros and 1s. 0, 1 and delta a transition. Initial state is the q0, final state is the q1. Okay, this is called the m. Okay? So as for the definition, m equal to q sigma delta q0 and f. Okay? Suppose if you take the this transition diagram, so if you show in terms of the definition, okay, q so set of states, okay? the machine having the two states and sigma set of input symbols, the machine uh, accepting the two types of the input symbols, zeros and ones. Next, the delta uh, transition function, initial state, q0 is the initial state, so this is the initial state, q1 is the final state. Moreover, one more thing we have to know, <coughs> every finite automata having uh, one initial state and one final state, one initial state and one final state. Generally, states are represented by the circle. States are represented by the circle. Okay, this is a state. So, I have to give the state numbers like 1, R, Q0, R, some A, like that. Okay, I have to give the state numbers. Okay, you can give either any number. R, Q0, Q1, Q2, R, A, B, C, D, like that. And moreover, one more, double circle indicates the final state. Final state. The, this is suppose, this is the initial state. Initial state. Okay. So every finite automata should I have one initial state, one final state. Okay? Sometimes the finite automata may have more than one state. But minimum one initial state, one final state. Okay? So initial state indicating the arrow. Okay? What is the state indicated by this arrow? So we can know this is the initial state. Okay? Any states having okay, uh, more than one uh, uh, circle, uh, that become a final state. Okay, because such a way we need to identify the the what is the initial state, what is the final state. Okay, suppose uh, if you take the, this example, th this transition diagram, so arrow is indicated by Q naught. So Q naught is the initial state. The Q one having the double arrow, and Q uh, Q one is the final state, like that. <coughs> Coming to the transition diagram, transition function delta, delta is mapping Q tends to Q. In the sense, suppose from the given figure, um, transition of Q0 on 0, Q0 on 0, we are moving to Q0, Q0. Transition of Q0 on 1, we are moving to Q0 on 1, we are moving to Q1. Transition of Q1 on 0, we are moving to Q1. Transition of Q1 on 1, we are moving to also Q1. Okay, this is the way to find the transition function okay the transition function actually is mapping q sigma tends to q the outcome of the dfa is the single state so such a way so i have to find the transition function okay transition of uh, what are the states and what are the input symbols okay as far we can identify find the write the transition functions <coughs> like that
next uh, coming to the properties properties of the dfa the properties of the dfa is the uh, dfa in the dfa one input should have one transition okay one input should have one transition for example uh, if you take the this transition diagram finite automata a q not on zero we are moving to q not next q not on one we are moving to q1 okay in the sense okay so in the deterministic finite automata okay one input should have only one transition not more than one transition only one transition okay that is that is one of the uh, property next in the dfa uh, it should not allow the more than one transition for example q not on zero if we give like that q not on one transition of q not on one we are moving to q not q1 okay this should not be allowed in the dfa okay in the sense in the deterministic finite automata one input should have only one transition like that okay should not have like that uh, one more property every in the dfa every state should have one transition for one input every state should have one transition for one input okay in the sense for example q not on zero q not q not on one moving to q1 okay in the sense okay here sigma equal to zeros and ones zero one so that's why so every state there are two states here okay the q not on zero one transition q not on one another transition okay so wherever uh, we go that is a doesn't matter but every state should have one transition for one input only okay, not more than one okay that is a one more property of dfa next uh, the third one is the epsilon are not allowed epsilon in the, uh, actually epsilon is also one of the input symbol okay we'll treat the empty okay epsilon are not allowed in the uh, dfa okay <coughs> next any state should not be empty or uh, uh, fourth uh, uh property is that any state should not be empty for example suppose if you write like that for example if you take this one oh. so what is transition of q not on 0 pi there is no transition okay Sh should not be like that okay every state should have one transition for one input but in in case of uh this diagram the q not on one is is there transition is there q not on one we are moving to q not to q1 but in case of the input zero there is no transition there is no transition so that's why uh, it is not allowed actually every okay, as i told every okay, every state should have one transition for one input okay like that so this is the uh, other properties okay this is regarding the dfa properties okay so i just i'll repeat so in the in the dfa <coughs> each and every input should have one transition only okay not more than one transition the second one uh, every state should have one transition okay any state should not be empty so moreover epsilon are not allowed uh, next uh, <coughs> epsilon is not allowed okay this is next coming to the uh, nfa non deterministic stick finite automata
not deterministic finite automata nfa so nfa non deterministic finite automata can be defined as phi tuples as dfa that is q sigma delta q not and f where q equal to set of states sigma equal to set of input symbols delta equal to transition function q not equal to initial state f equal to final state but what is the difference between the dfa and nfa is only transition function in case of the transition function in case of the nfa delta is mapping q sigma tends to 2 power q the outcome of the nfa is the 2 power q okay so 2 power q in the sense the set of subsets of the states the set of subsets of the states okay that is called that is the difference between dfa and nfa okay in case of the nfa dfa you know okay delta is mapping q sigma tends to q okay the outcome of the dfa is the single state the outcome of the nfa is the more than one state that is the only difference between nfa and dfa okay <coughs> coming to the the properties of the for example q not q1 okay this is the nfa the transition the, what is the uh, i have written the transition diagram is the nfa because as for the properties of the non deterministic finite automata here the any state may have more than one transition for the same input okay any state may have more than one transition for the same input that is one of the property okay next any state may be empty transition for the any input any state may be empty tra empty transition for the any input that is one more uh, property but uh, moreover in the non deterministic finite automata epsilon are allowed epsilon moves are allowed so that is a that will be different uh, uh, topic the nfa with epsilon moves okay that's why that is one more property okay this is the non deterministic finite finite automata okay non deterministic means so there will be okay uh, one input may have more than one transitions okay like that this is the nfa <coughs> Next, uh, coming to the acceptance of the string, string acceptance. The main purpose of the finite automata is the given language is accepted or rejected. That is the main purpose of the finite automata okay the finite automata is a mission action it is a mission so it can uh, give the information whether the given language is accepted or rejected that's all that is the main purpose of the finite automata okay actually the oh, moreover the finite automata acceptance <coughs> Uh, for example if you take the transition diagram q0 q1 q2 q3 suppose q0 is the initial state final state Zero, 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 one, 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 one. <coughs> Let us take the string zero, one, zero, one, one. 
Now let us check whether the given string is accepted or rejected. The string acceptance, I have to take the string, string is a state and uh, what is the string we have taken and uh, q naught on 0. So q naught on 0, we are moving to q2, we are moving to otherwise uh, okay, we can take the table also, okay, tra transition table. Transition table. Okay, the transition table having state and inputs. Inputs are 0, 1, states q0, q1, q2, and q3. q0 final state and as well as q0 initial state. q0 on uh, 0 moving to q2. Q0 on 1 moving to Q1, Q1 on 0, Q3, Q1 on 1, Q0, Q2 on 0, Q0, Q2 on 1, Q3, Q3 on 0, Q1, Q3 on 1, Q3 on 1, Q2, okay. This is the actually transition diagram. Now, let us check it, whether the given string is accepted or rejected, string acceptance. Q0 on 0, Q0 on 0, we are moving to Q2, Q2 is our 0, 1, 1. Now, the string acceptance, the, whether the given string is accepted or rejected, okay, you know, actually the main purpose of the finite automata is to recognize the language. So, when we are submitting the language to the mission, so the language is accepted or rejected. That's all. That is the main purpose of the finite automata. Suppose let us consider the this finite automata, okay, the Q0, there are four states, There are four states. Actually, this is the transition table. The string acceptance means uh, if the the string X is said to be accepted by the finite automata, the transition of Q0 on X equal to P. If you reach into the final state, okay? so end of the uh, reading of the string, if you reach into the final state, the string is accepted. Okay? So, suppose let us consider the given string. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now, let us check it. So, I have to take the, I have to start from the initial state, Q0, and take the entire string, 0, 1, 1, and. So, now, the current state is the, initial state is the Q0, the current input symbol, okay, 0. Okay, Q0 on 0. Q0 on 0, we are moving to Q2. So, read the input symbol, 0, and move to the Q2, Q2, and this is over, okay, the input 0 is over, okay, remaining string is 0, 1, 1. Now, current state is Q2, Q2 on current input symbol is 0, Q2 on 0, we are moving to Q2 on 0, Q0, state is Q0, this is the one is uh, uh, red, and remaining string is 0, 1, 1. Like Q0 on 0, Q0 on 0, Q2, next, Q2 on 1, Q2 on 1, Q3, 
ऐसे Q3 एन वन क्यू टू नाउ ऑब्जर्व इट सो हैव टेकन द इनिशियल स्टेट एंड स्ट्रिंग व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू चेकिंग ओके एंड रीड द ईच एंड एवरी सिंबल एंड फाइनली स्ट्रिंग इज एम टी स्टेट इज क्यू टू ओके हाउ we can say the string is accepted or rejected so end of the reading of the string if you reach into the final state if you reach into the final state then the language is accepted other language or string will be accepted otherwise end of the reading of the string if if you not reach into the final state okay, in the sense okay in the place of the state what is the state here q2 q2 is not a final state actually as for the Uh, given mission, the final state is Q naught, so that's why not accepted. Not accepted. Okay. So in case of the mission, actually, in case of the mission, actually the finite data mission, every finite data mission having input tape. Finite control. Okay, this is the generally the mission, the finite automata mission having input pair head. This is the head. Head input pair. Next finite control. Okay, so what is the language or string we are, we want to check whether it is accepted or rejected. so i have to place on the input tape and uh, the head the use of the head is head is always read the one symbol at a time only one symbol at a time that is the read head that's why you can say it is the read head only read only head next finite control the finite control having the the little memory uh, it can store the the current state of the mission only okay so for example if you take the same diagram same string the string is 0 1 0 1 like that okay that is empty oh. so finite control having q not q not on 0 read the it can read 0 Q not and zero, so moving to Q two. So it is read and head move to the next like that. Okay. Uh, next current state is Q two like that. Next to Q two on one, Q two on one moving to Q three. Q three. Is over. Next, Q3 on one. Q3 on one. Moving to Q2. Next, Q2 on one. Moving to Q3. Q3 on one. Moving to Q2 on one. Q to one move to Q three. Okay, the Q three is not a final state. Okay, not accepted. design so we can design the finite automata for the formal languages okay uh, actually coming to the language language is nothing but a, the uh, set of strings language is nothing but a set of strings now let us uh, uh, take the one example uh, to design the uh, finite automata uh, finite automata in the sense uh, dfa okay design dfa for the language l that accepting the set of all strings of 
zeros and ones. Okay, the every uh, string ends with zero zero. Every string ends with zero zero. Design DFA for the language for the language. L that accepts zeros and ones. Design DFA for the language zeros and ones. Zeros and ones. Every string. Ends with zero zero. Okay, this is the language. Now we need to design DFA. Here, first let us know the language L equal to. Oh. According to the language, okay, ends with zero zero. Okay, every string ends with zero zero. In the sense. The minimum string is zero zero. Minimum string is zero zero. Next, any ones? Okay, one zero, one zero zero. Next, maybe one one zero zero. Maybe zero one one zero zero. One zero one one zero zero, and so on like that. Okay, this is the language. Okay, first of all, we have to know what type of Strings will be in the given language. Okay, what type of the types of the strings will be in the given language? Given language. So here, according to the this language, okay, the minimum string is zero zero. But because of ends with zero zero, next take any string. Okay, before zero zero, we can place any number of zeros and ones. But every string ends with zero zero only. So this is the language. So. When we design the finite automata for any formal language, first of all depends on the minimum condition or minimum string. So according to that, uh, we have to decide number of states. Okay? Because here uh, uh, we need to decide how many number of states required. Number of states. So uh, the minimum string is zero zero. To accepting two zeros, we need to take the three states like. Zero zero. Suppose this is the final state. This is the initial state. Q naught, Q one, and Q two. Next. So we are going to design DFA. Okay, DFA in the sense as for the properties of DFA. Okay, uh, every state should have one transition for each and every input. Every state should have one transition for each and every input. So here sigma. Okay, sigma equal to Zeros and ones, zeros and ones. Uh, in the sense, Q naught and zero. Already zero is given. Okay. Now we need to give the one. So where we have to give the transition one. So that is the uh, logic. So here, if you uh, there are uh, possibilities. Okay. If you want, you, you can give the zero uh, one self or two Q naught or two Q two. Okay, anyway we can give it, but which is the correct decision? Okay, sometimes if you give the wrong transition, what happens? Other languages may accept. Actually, we are designing the DFA for any language in the sense. So, what are the strings in the language should be accepted? That's all. Okay, other strings should not be accepted. That is the our motto. So according to that, we need to give the remaining transitions. Okay, but uh, there are three possibilities. Okay, which is the correct way? Okay, okay, we can give it. Okay, if you give the self, is no problem. Okay, Q1 on zero is given one. So we have to give one. So here also there are three possibilities. If you want, you can give the self uh, one transition, or you, may, you can give to the Q2, or 
you can give to the Q naught. Okay, which one is? Suppose if you give to the self, what happens? Q naught, zero, one, zero, also accepting. But it is not in the language. Okay, that's why this is the wrong decision. So don't give the. Suppose if you give to the Q2, what happens? Okay, zero, one, also accepting. Okay, actually the string should answer with the zero, zero only. Okay, this is also wrong. So alternative is the give to the back. Same, Q2 on one back on self zero. So now let us take the any valid string that should be accepted. Okay, that should be accepted. Okay, the Q naught on zero, Q naught, Q one, Q, Q naught on one, Q naught. Okay, so this is the design for the languages. Okay, like that. Okay, we can design the uh, 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 finite automata for any kind of formal languages like that. Okay, okay, this is the main concept. Okay, to design the languages. Okay, these are the uh, moreover the importance uh, the differences of the uh, the NFA and DFA. Okay, so as I told uh, properties. Okay, the NFA uh, in the DFA. So only uh, one transition should have only one input. Okay, one state should have one input in the NFA. So one uh, state may have more than one transition for the same input. Okay, okay these are the you can say the uh, some um, differences between the NFA and DFA. Okay, okay, these are the things. Hi guys, welcome to the video lecture theory of computation. Myself, Dr. Raju Anita from Cal University. Today I would like to discuss about some important topics that are related to theory of computation. So here I would like to tell the first minimization of minimization of DFA deterministic finite automata. The next one is push down automata. Push down automata. And the third one is curing machine. Curing machine. Now I would like to discuss about minimization of deterministic finite automata. Here the minimization of deterministic finite automata, the name itself is saying that how we are going to reduce the number of states in the given deterministic finite automata. This is one of the important tasks that we are transferring the given DFA into its equivalence DFA by reducing the number of tasks. So here we are having two types of theorems we are following to minimize the deterministic finite automata. The first theorem is Mahil Nirod theorem. Mahil Nirod theorem. And the second one is equivalence theorem. Equivalence theorem. So here we are following the Mahil Nirod theorem for minimization of the given deterministic finite automata. The another name for Mahil Nirod theorem is equivalence theorem. Here we are saying equivalence theorem is the another one and myhill nirod theorem we are having another name that is table filling method. Table filling method. The name itself saying this is the table filling method that means we are going to represent the tabular form and we are going to take how we are going to fill this in the tabular representation for the given minimum uh, DFA, deterministic finite automata. Now I would like to take one example and I will explain you how we are going to utilize this myhill nirod theorem and how we are reducing the number of states in the given deterministic finite automata. Now here for this I would like to take one deterministic finite automata that is here if you are seeing I am taking different states here I am saying this one SB and A and here I am taking C and D, E, F. So the total number of states are 6 states I am taking here and I would like to give the input here. here the state A after reading 0 it is going for B and the state B after reading 0 it is going for A and B after reading 1 it is going for C and after reading 1 it is going for D. Now D after reading 1 it is going for F and after reading 0 it is going for E. In the same manner C after reading 1 it is going for F and after reading 0 it is going for E. E and now E after reading 
1 it is going for f and here we are having 0 comma 1 this is an example deterministic finite automata i am giving for you to follow the mahil nirod theorem now let us see here the total is six states we can able to see then how we are reducing this the number of states by following this theorem as a first step of this First, we need to write all the pairs. The first step in the Mahil Nirod theorem is here. First, we are having all the states. What are the states here? The six states. For these six states, I would like to design a table F and here I'm writing the same A, B, C, D, E, F. These are the states I have. Here I'm taking the final states. Here I would like to take C as a final state and D as a final state and here E as a final state. So here the representation of the final state is double circle and in this DFA here totally I'm having three different final states. Now here I'm designing a table for here and the pairs, the total pairs I am designing here in the tabular representation. Why? Because uh, this is the first step we are following for Mahil Nirod theorem. So here I am writing this table. Then after I am saying, is there any repetition of pairs that are existed? Yes, here. If you are observing here A, B and here B, A. These are the repetition of the pair. So A, B you are taking here. This cell is repeated here B, A. So because of this, I would like to... I would like to eliminate this repetition of pairs. So here I am designing a diagonal like this and I am removing the upper part of this diagram. So whenever you are designing the diagonal line and removing the upper part of this one that means we are eliminating the repetition of these pairs why here is we are eliminating the repetition of pair if you are taking the pair p comma q this is also we can say that q comma p so whenever you are having the repetition of this pair like this just we are eliminating the repetition of the pair that is the first step we are doing the second step is so here no problem at all i am removing this or otherwise you can design or you can leave this one as it is like this. If you are getting any confused regarding this then you can design that cross diagonal and you can place mark like this. That means we are not going to utilize this one and I am marking like this. Now here you need to see the given deterministic finite automata. See the given deterministic finite automata. Here I have a pair B comma A. So here B A. In this given deterministic finite automata A B. Both are it's not a final state. Then you are not marking anything. When we are going to mark here as per the Mahil Nirod theorem. The second step is mark a pair P comma Q whenever any one of this state is belongs to final state so if you are seeing in this diagram a b these two are not belongs to final state so that's why i'm not marking i'm leaving this cell as it is now you are going for the second cell c a so i'm having a pair c comma a see here in my diagram c a whenever you are seeing here in my diagram c is the final state and a is a not final state so in this given pair one is a final state whenever you are having one is a final state you are marking this as a tick mark then take the next pair c comma b see here c b in this both states c is a final state and b is not a final state so one of the pair, one of the state is a final state whenever one of the state is a final state you are making mark that one next take the next one d a so if you are taking d a d is the final state and a is not a final state so we can mark this one as Yes. Next D comma B. So here I am taking D comma B. Yes, D is a final state and B is not a final state. Yes, I am marking here. Next D comma C. Whenever you are seeing D comma C, both are final state. If both are final state, even we are not marking, we are leaving that cell as it is. Next one E A. I am taking E A. So if you are taking E A, then E is a final state and A is a not final state. You are marking this cell. 
Next, E C. So C is the pair E C. So these two are final state. So I am not marking here and I am leaving this cell as it is. Next, you are having E C. So E C both are the final state. So I am not marking this. Next, I am having E D. If you are seeing E D, both are the final states. I am not marking anything. Next, E A, E F A. So take here F A, F and A. Both are the non final states so i am not marking f b f and b both are the non final states i am not marking f c both are the here c is the final state and f is a not final state so i am marking the cell here next f e so whenever you are having f e then here f and e e is the final state and f is not a final state so i am marking this cell f e and what about f d you are having f and d here d is a final state and f is a non final state so i am marking this also because one is the final state another one is a non final state now this is the second step in my hill neuro theorem now we are going for the third step i am repeating once again the first step is i am taking the pairs and the second step is i am marking all the pairs one is belongs to final state and one is not belongs to the final state if both are belongs to final state even we are not marking the third step is the third step we are following now collect all the unmarked pairs if you are seeing this diagram we can see this cell is unmarked so take this pair b comma a so b comma a is unmarked pair and also you can see here d comma c so d comma c is an unmarked pair and also you can see e comma b so e comma b is an unmarked pair and you can see e comma d e comma d is also unmarked pair and e comma c e comma c is also unmarked pair next f comma a f comma a is unmarked pair and you can see f comma b is also unmarked pair so now i have all these pairs are unmarked so finally whatever you are having this unmarked pairs you need to apply the inputs whatever you are having in the deterministic finite automata that is 0 comma 1 you are applying those two inputs on this unmarked pairs so how we are going to apply the unmarked pairs here is delta what is the pair here b comma a so i am taking delta b comma 0 that means the inputs for me is 0 comma 1 so first i am applying delta b comma 0 where it is going after reading 0 from b it is going for a so you can see this diagram b after reading 0 it is going for a then after you are saying a a comma 0 because the pair for me is b comma a that's why i'm writing b a so the input i'm initially taking it as 0 now see a after reading 0 where it is going it is going for b so i'm writing here b now see here i got the pair a b again so whenever you are getting a pair a comma b again you are seeing whether that is marked or not in the given table no here there is no marking so leave it as it is now the same procedure we are following for the input one delta b comma one so b comma one why i'm taking here one zero input is over that's why i'm applying the another input one also b comma one b after reading one it is going for c delta a after reading one where it is going delta a after reading one it is going for d c comma d so c here c comma d there is no such pair c comma d in my table so you are leaving as it is c comma d there is no such pair and we are leaving we are not doing anything for this cell just we are leaving as it is here and we are moving for the next cell which is not marked so so the next cell is d comma c apply the same procedure for the next pair d comma c so here i am applying delta d comma 0 and next delta c comma 0 what it mean d after reading 0 where it is going d after reading 0 it is going for e next c after reading 0 c after reading 0 it is going for e 
So, if you are saying here e comma e, is there such type of pair in my table? E comma e, no such type of pair in my table. So, I am not doing anything for that cell. Next, I am going for delta d comma 1. So, because I applied already 0, now it is the turn for me to apply 1. So, d comma 1. See here, the state d after reading 1, where it is moving? It is moving for f. So, I am writing here f. Next, delta c comma 1. So, c, the state c, after reading 1, where it is going? It is moving to f. Again, I have a pair f comma f. So, is there such type of pair in my table? No, there is no such type of pair in my table. So, I am leaving d comma c as it is blank. That means I am not doing anything for this cell. Now, I am going for the next pair which it is not marked. So, what is the next pair I have here which it is not, not marked? E comma b. So, I am taking that pair e comma b and I am applying the same procedure here. That is the input is delta e comma 0 e after reading 0 where it is going it is going to delta e comma 0 e, where it is going here i am writing here e comma 0 i am not going anywhere that's why i am writing here the diagram e comma 0 so it is going to e next b delta b comma 0 where it is going delta b comma 0 b after reading 0 it is going for a so, E comma A. Is there any such pair? E comma A? Yes, it is that. It is marked. So, now you are writing E comma B is marked. So, you can say that E comma B is marked because if there is anything, one thing is marked. Here, E comma A. This is marked. Now, you are applying the same for E comma 1 that is equal to F delta B comma 1. B comma 1 equal to C. F comma C. If you are seeing F comma C, this is also marked. So, I am marking this cell E comma B. Okay, leave it. Now, we are going for the next pair. What is the next pair? E comma C. Now, we are going for the next pair that is E comma C. Now, apply the same procedure for E comma C. Now, I am applying here the same procedure for E comma C. Here, this is a cell E comma C which it is not marked yet. So, now apply delta E comma 0, delta C comma 0. So, after reading 0, it is going for E. Next, C comma 0. C after reading 0, it is going for E. So, this E comma E, this such type of pair is not existed in my table. So, I am going for the next delta E comma 1. So, here what is uh, after reading E, E after reading 1, it is going for F. I am writing here F, then after delta C comma 1. So, C comma 1. So, here C after reading 1, it is going for F. So, I am getting again F comma F. Here E comma E, F comma F. There is no such type of pair. So, I am not marking anything in E comma C. Now, go for E comma D. The next pair is E comma D. So, apply the same delta E comma 0 that is equal to E after reading 0, it is going for E. Delta D after reading 0. D after reading 0, where it is going? It is going to E. Next, D, delta E after reading 1, it is going to F. And delta D after reading 1, delta D after reading 1, it is going to F. Again, I am having the pair E comma E and F comma F. Is there anything marked here? There is no such type of pairs in my table. E comma E and F comma F. That's why I am not doing anything for the cell E comma D. I am leaving as it is. Now you are going for F comma A. That is the next uh, the pair which it is not marked yet. So I am going for that F comma A. So apply the same procedure for F comma A and here delta f after reading 0 where it is going delta f after reading 0 it is going to f delta a after reading 0 where it is going a after reading 0 it is going for b so f comma b f comma b is it is marked no so i am writing here unmarked 
the next pair is delta f comma f comma 1 so f after reading 1 it is going for f and delta a after reading 1 a after reading 1 it is going for d so here see a and d f and d is the pair f and d is marked so i am marking here if one is unmarked the other one is marked then you are making mark this one the pair f comma a I am marking that pair. Now the one only the left which is the cell it is not marked is F comma B. I am writing here F comma B and apply the same procedure F comma 0. So after reading 0 I am moving for F to F and delta B comma 0. So B after reading 0 where it is moving it is moving to A. See the pair F comma A. So which it is marked. So if one is marked there is no need to see for another one. That's why I am marking this one as it is. Right. Now my table is filled with some marking cells and some unmarked, unmarked cells. Now see what are the cells that are not marked yet after completion of this third step. What are the cells here? A comma B which it is not marked and see the next cell D comma C which it is not marked D comma C and next E comma C, E comma C which is not marked and E comma D, E comma D. So these are the cells left with unmarking. Now what I am doing here is I am going to club all these unmarked pairs together right here a b so i would like to club this a b as a single state see this diagram how i am clubbing these two and i am clubbing a comma b next d comma c so i am clubbing these two states d comma c together and next e comma c so e comma c i am clubbing these two together e comma c next e comma d now i am clubbing this e comma d together see if you are seeing this diagram what I did is whatever the pairs that are left and marked that I clubbed all the space together here then finally I am designing a diagram with this so what I am doing here a comma b two states are clubbed together so I am taking a comma b as a single state I am marking it as a start state as usual in my diagram the next one is c comma d d comma e and e comma c these are all Club it together. Once you are seeing this, these are all together mixed with a single state. So I am clubbing all those together and I am making C, D, E, these three together as a single state. Whenever you are seeing that in my original DFA, the final states are C, D, E. Now I am making this also as a final state. Next, what are the states that are left in my diagram? Yes, I covered the states A comma B, C comma D comma E. The left state here is F. So, I am taking that F as also the state. Now, see the original diagram. A after reading 0, where it is going? It is going to B. Now, I am designing 0. A after reading 0, it is going to A. Next, B after reading 0, it is going to A. Right? Now, I am writing like this. Now, A after reading 1, where it is going? It is going to D. B after reading 1, it is going to C. So, no problem here. Next, C after reading 0, it is going to E. So, I am writing like this E. And D after reading 0, it is going to E. That is there itself. And E after reading 0, it is going to E. There itself. Next, C after reading 1, it is going to F and D after reading 1, it is going to F and E after reading 1, going to F. Now, what is the input symbol that is left here for F? 0, 1. If you are seeing this, observe this diagram, the given DFA is having 6 states and now whatever I got after minimizing the given DFA, I got the diagram with totally three states this dfa is equivalent for the given dfa you can check by taking any input see here in my original diagram the final state is d d after reading one where it is going f if you are seeing my 
diagram E after reading 1. Where it is going? F. So totally this is the final diagram I obtained after applying the Michael Nero theorem for minimizing the number of states. Okay, understood? This is the concept. Now we are going for the next concept. Now I am erasing here. Next we are going for the next concept. Push down automata. This is very, this problem minimizing the given DFA is very important topic and uh, this is very, uh, you have to understand how we are going to minimize the number of states. The next one is, we are going for, the next topic is push down automata. Push down automata. Now, let me explain for you here why we are going for push down automata. Already we are having deterministic finite automata and non deterministic finite automata. Then, what is the need to go for push down automata? Are there any limitations that are existed in deterministic finite automata? Yes, it is. The limitation here, what is the drawback we identify in finite automata, deterministic finite automata is here I am designing the basic structure of finite automata. In this my basic structure of finite automata, this is the input tape, this is the finite control, finite control and this is the input tape. Now the finite control is pointing to the input tape, the each cell and it is going to read a input from the given tape. This is what we have in the finite state automata. That is deterministic finite automata or non-deterministic finite automata. Now this is the basic structure we are having. The main limitation we observed here is if we like to design a finite automata with for the long ways a power n, b power n. See here, a power n, b power n. What is, what is meant by this? a power n and b power n. The number of a's, it should be equal to the number of b's. What, how could you know here? The longest here is a come a a, b b. So, or otherwise, we can write a long ways here. Here I am writing n greater than or equal to 1. This is my long ways. L is equal to a power n, b power n, n greater than or equal to 1. This is my long ways. For this long ways, I am designing here the strings. Initially, I am taking n value is 1. Then whenever you are taking n value 1, the string it will becomes a b. The second, the second string is, if I am taking n value 2, it will become a a b b. Next, if you are giving n value 3, n value 3, then it will, the string is 3 a's and 3 b's. What I observed here in 3 a's and 3 b's, that means the number of b's is depends upon the number of a's. This is the long ways, right? So here, whenever you would like to write the number of b's, you should, it should remember how many number of a's that was there in previous. But in finite automata, it is not possible. Why? Because whenever you are having in first state, suppose here, I am in q naught state. Whenever you are in q naught state, after reading the input symbol, here I am giving the input symbol A, now it is moving from Q0 to Q1. That means whenever it is the, it is moved from Q0 to Q1, it doesn't remember what is the previous symbol, symbol it was read. That is here, in here Q1, you doesn't know what was the previous symbol. Here the previous symbol is A that was read from the, by the finite automata. But it cannot remember what is the previous symbol that was read. This is the main limitation that we are facing in finite automata. Because of this, we are introducing the push down automata. This push down automata is for context free languages. So here in push down automata, what we are doing, we are adding that is finite automata. This is works as it is as a finite automata. The additional thing what we are doing here is we are adding memory, memory storage finite automata plus memory storage that is push down automata so what is the use of this memory storage to remember what was the previous state that was what what was the previous input symbol that was read the because of that reason we are adding here memory storage here the memory storage it can be the stack so that that's why here i'm using 
stack memory storage finite automata plus stack memory storage is equal to push down automata now based upon this let me design a basic structure of push down automata here is my input tape here i am writing this is my input tape and here this is a finite control finite control here this finite control head this is the read write head here i am pointing this finite control unit is here then after here i have an additional one that is memory storage this is stack so here i am writing z not why i am writing here z not because here this indicates the top of the stack so here i am performing the operations this is for pop operation and this is push operation and we are also using the no operation why because no operations are we are using for especially for non deterministic finite automata that means whenever you would like to skip a input symbol we are using the no operation here this is the stack we are using here for an additional memory storage this one so here pop means you are going to delete an element that is there in the stack and push means you are inserting an element into the stack now let us see by taking an example for a long ways that is i gave it as l is equal to a power n b power n such that n greater than or equal to 1 so for this let me explain how we are going to design a push down automata before we are going to design a push down automata we should understand what are the tuples that are having so here in push down automata m is equal to in finite automata we are having five tuples that is q sigma delta q not and f there are the standard tuples we are having and along with this q sigma delta q not f we are having two more additional symbols in push down automata <coughs> those additional symbols are tau comma z not these two are the additional symbols we are adding for push down automata what is tau here the tau indicates the stack symbol and z not is the top of the stack or we can say that initially z not is the bottom of the stack that means always the z not it will be the bottom. okay m is equal to q sigma delta q not yes tau and z not here as we know up to here these five tuples we covered in deterministic finite automata non deterministic finite automata that is q is the set of states q is a finite set of states we can say that and and sigma is input alphabet here i am writing input alphabet so whatever the inputs you are taking that is and delta is a transition function here the transition function it will be differ for deterministic finite automata and non deterministic finite automata and push down automata and here under the push down automata we are having uh, that is uh, npde also that is non deterministic push down automata and here pda that is deterministic push down automata or pda and npda this transition function it will be differ for pda and npda how we are writing the transition function for pda is uh, we are writing the transition function delta here q into sigma union epsilon into tau tends to q into tau star this is a transition function for push down automata that's why i'm writing here transition function delta indicates q into sigma union epsilon why i am writing here epsilon that means that indicates where the where our input string ends that's why here i am taking this epsilon also and tau here tau indicates the stack symbol that means what are the stack symbols that are existed in my stack then after this implies q into tau star why here i am writing tau star in the sense what are the operations i performed here that indicates here the tau star next this is for this transition function indicates for pda and npda there is one small difference between this transition function that is this i am writing 2 power q into tau star whenever you are writing 2 power q into tau star that it will become npda next here 
tau. This tau indicates what is the stack symbols. This is called stack symbols. What are the stack symbols we are having that indicates the tau and z naught. Here z naught is the bottom of the stack. Here I am writing z naught that is the bottom of the stack. So these are the different tuples that are existed for our push down automata. Here whenever you are reading an input from the given tape then this suppose here in my input tape I have the strings a a b b what this indicates here this string is a in the given long wave l is equal to a power n b power n such that n greater than or equal to 1 this is my long wave in this long wave i am writing a strings l is equal to what are the strings i can get in this given long wave i am initially taking n value 1 whenever you are taking n value 1 the string it will be a b next i am taking n value is equal to 2 so whenever you are taking n values 2 the string it will be a b sorry a a b b because here i am taking n value 2 then a a b b what is the next string i will obtain and a a a b b b and so on so what i observed here is the number of a's is equal to the number of b's so for this long ways i would like to construct the push down automata then let us see how we are going to construct the push down automata for the given long ways l is equal to a power n b power n such that n greater than or equal to 1 and as well as how we are going to write the transition functions for the given push down atom so here i am designing initially how it will work so here i have the input tape here again i am taking and now i would like to take the input i am taking input a a b b and next here this is a finite control finite control which it is pointing to the initial input symbol and there is a stack initially in my stack there is z naught because that is the bottom of the stack now here the finite control is reading a whenever the finite control is reading the input a then then what i am doing is i am pushing this a into the stack so here i am pushing here a into the stack see here there is we can directly push this a input symbol into the stack or otherwise we can use some additional symbols whatever i require for example i don't want to push this a as it is into my stack instead of this a i would like to push capital a into my stack yes you can or otherwise you can push x y like that or otherwise p q those are the symbols you can use instead of uh, pushing this input symbols directly into the stack anyhow I am using the symbol as it is whatever I am reading from the given input tape that symbol I am pushing as it is into my stack here what the how we are going to write the transition function for this so delta initially I am here in the state q0 so q0 after reading a I am reading the input symbol a next what is the top of the stack initially whenever you are not pushing the a into the stack the initial stack of the symbol is z naught so here is the transaction i am writing delta q naught a comma z naught indicates i am in the initial state q naught after reading the input symbol a and the top of and the top of the stack is z naught i am pushing into the this a into the stack so how I am not changing my state q0 I am remaining the same state q0 and I am pushing a into the stack now how it will be a z0 it will be the top of the stack now I am writing here now I am in q0 the state the same state now okay this a is completed now my finite control unit is pointing to this a now I am reading again a so here I am reading again the input symbol a and what is the top of the stack you are having here a so here the top of the stack is a because here i'm saying initially the top of the stack is z naught but now this is a so here a a whenever you are having a and the top of the stack is a then i'm pushing again this a also into my stack now my stack is having a a so here i'm not repeating here z naught why because here z naught already it is there that bottom of the stack now here a a i am having now i am pushing that a also into my stack now i am having a a right now here 
delta q naught okay now here this a is also over now my finite control unit is pointing to b now my input is b and what is the top of the sack here a so whenever i am reading the input symbol b on the top of the sack is a what i am doing here is i would like to pop from the stack so i am popping an element from the stack so whenever you are popping an element from the stack that means what is the top of the stack a this it should be pop this it should be pop so what is the indication of pop here now i am popping the top of the stack now i am changing my state so from q0 to i am changing to q1 now q1 and here i am writing epsilon why i am writing epsilon this movement indicates i just popped an element from the stack this indication of this epsilon is pop operation now here b is over so whenever i read b i popped a from the given stack now again my finite control unit is pointing to this b again i am having now i changed my state before that i was there in q not state now my state is q1 now i am in the state q1 and here comma what is the input b is the input and what are what is the top of the stack 1a is it is removed now the top of the stack is a right i am writing here a now whenever b and the top of the stack is a what i am doing i am popping that element so here i am popping the top of the stack here a is also popped here now so now my transactions up to 4 is completed now in which state i am in q1 state what is the input my total input it was completed right so what it is there epsilon that epsilon indicates that is the end of the string whenever you are reading epsilon and the top of the stack is z not what you are doing here is i would like to change either my state or i would like to change q2 comma z not or q2 comma epsilon so this indicates you want to complete this push down automata by emptying the stack or by final state so this this diagram is uh, this diagram is representing how i am pushing the input symbols to the stack and when we are going to pop from the given stack so this is the transition representation for push down automata now let us see how we are going to design a diagram for the push down automata based upon this instantaneous description now here i am writing q not see the diagram how i am designing based upon these transitions q not so a so after reading the input symbol a the input symbol a and what is the top of the sack z not what is the operation i am doing here i am pushing that a into stack z not i am remaining in the same state here uh, try to understand this is the input symbol top of the stack what the operation i did i am pushing a into the stack this is the representation okay this is completed next come here q not the top of the stack is a and here the input is a now here i am moving here q not after reading a a i am still there in here that means a the the, the top of the stack here is a z not then you are pushing a into the stack this is what i did here then after i am reading b so whenever i am reading b as an input symbol i am changing from q not to q1 so here i am changing from q not to q1 now what is the top of the stack here a and what the operation i am doing here i am just popping so that's why epsilon so this epsilon indicates the pop operation now i am in q1 and after reading b after reading the input symbol b and the top of the stack is a just i am popping that element from the stack okay now i am in q1 when i am moving to q2 when i am moving to q2 whenever you are reading the input symbol epsilon and the top of the stack is z not then you are popping and you are moving to the final state q2 this is the representation of push down automata then for the long ways l is equal to a power n b power n such that n greater than or equal to 1 in this way you can represent the transitions and as well as the diagram and you can 
check whether these transitions are working for all kinds of input that was there in my given language. Let us check the verification. How we are going to verify whether my language is correct or whether my transitions whatever I design are correct. So here I am taking delta. See here I am taking the input 3As and 3Bs. So here I am taking initially Q0 and here 3As and 3Bs. I am taking here 3As and 3Bs and initially I am having the input symbol Z0. So here this is the transitions. So initially Q0, A, Z0. What I am doing based upon my transition Q0, A, Z0, I am pushing that A into the stack. That is Q0, comma A, Z0. Okay, over. Now my transition Q0, this A is over and next I am having 2 A's and 3 B's, comma. What is the top of the stack here? A. Or otherwise I am writing A, Z0. Now see, I am in Q0 and the input symbol is A and the top of the stack is A. Here I am verifying the Q0 and here the input symbol A and the top of the stack here is A, Z0. So I am taking here the top of the stack is A, Z0 because now I have the top of the stack is A. I am writing here A, Z0. Now Q0, the input symbol is A and the top of the stack is A now. See in my transition, delta Q0, A and the top of the stack is A. What I am doing, I am pushing this A into the stack. Now the same thing I am doing here, I am not changing my state and I am pushing that A also into the, my stack. Now I have Q0 comma A A. So you here you can write the Z0 also but no problem here. I am leaving this A A but I am not going for Z0. Why? Because initially if you are not having anything in the stack then I am writing the Z0. So here no need to write Z0 here then if you are you can also write here the Z0. Now I am writing A A is my or the symbols whatever we have in my stack. Now come here. Now delta Q0 this A is over now. Now what is the left here A, B, 3 Bs and C. What is the top of the stack here? A is the top of the stack. Now here again I am checking Q0 and the input is A and the top of the stack is A. See here in my transaction Q0 the input is A and the top of the stack is A. So whenever you are having this you are e pushing that A into the stack. So here the same thing I am doing here. Q0, A is pushed into the stack. Now my stack is having 3 A's. Those 3 A's I pushed into my stack. Now here Q0, this A is also over. Now what left here? B, B, B and the top of the stack is A now here. Because you are seeing this one as a top of the stack. Now see here Q0, B and A. See Q0 in my transitions, Q0, B, A. Whenever the input symbol is B and the top of the stack is A, you are changing the state Q1 and you are popping the top of the stack. So here I have Q1, 2As. Why? Because this A is popped. So for this, now again I am having Q0, B is completed over. The left input is B, B and the top of the stack is again A. So again see my transitions. I am in Q0. So sorry, here we are in Q1. Why? Because we changed the state here Q1. Q1 on the top of the stack is B. Sorry, input symbol is B on the top of the stack is A. See here, Q1, B and the top of the stack is A. What we are doing? We are popping and we are remaining in the same state and now we are popping the input. So here, what? whenever you are popping that one, that means, so what is left in my here? Q1 comma A that it will be left. So here again here I am writing Q1 and here this B is over B comma A. Again we are having then you are removing and Z0 it will be the top right. So here after removing A from my stack then what is the bottom of the stack Z0 it will be left. Now Q0 Q1 and the input symbol is epsilon and Z0 then I am going for Q2 and either you can write epsilon or we can write Z0 that means it will be the final state. So that means my string that is triple A and triple B this is accepted by my 
given push down automata so once you are reaching to the final state the indication of this one is my string is accepted for the given push down automata this is the verification procedure what i followed based upon these transition functions and based upon my given push down automata diagram this is about the push down automata how we are going to design the long ways whatever the given long ways how we are going to design the push down automata transitions how i am designing the diagram and this is the verification process how you are following now see here the next topic of i am discussing here is uh, turing machines so turing machine as i told for you why we went for push down automata even we are having a, a deterministic finite automata and non deterministic finite automata we are going for push down automata because the limitations whatever we faced in finite automata is there is no storage of memory because of this reason we went for the push down automata then here i am discussing about turing machine turing machine so why we are going for the turing machine Turing machine is a mathematical digital computational method. That's the model what we are designing. This Turing machine is introduced was introduced by Alan Turing in the year of 1936. So here the main intention of this Turing machine is uh, here this is work for recursively enumerable languages which are generated by type zero grammar. So for such kind of uh, languages we are using this Turing machine. Let us see what are the tuples we are having in the Turing. mission and how we are going to design this turing machine for the given long ways so before that we should know what are the tuples we are having in the turing machine as i told for you in in finite automata in finite automata what are the tuples we are having q sigma delta q not and f these five tuples in pda we are having q sigma delta q not f along with this i wrote two extra tuples that is tau and z not right and here in turing machine i am writing here the tuples q sigma delta q not f tau and also here i am writing a blank blank that indicates and here final f f is a final state already i wrote here and i am writing like this this indicates the blank space so this blank space is in the given tape that indic that means in the turing machine we are having a tape that is infinite length of the tape infinite length of the tape we are having so here the finite control unit it will be the the one of the advantage in the turing machine is this tape head is moving forward and backward that means it moves left and right so if you like to move this finite this read and write head either we can move to the right and this head it can move to the left that is the advantage in the turing machine that we are having now let us see what is the tra delta transition function we are having so before that already you know this tuples what is the indication of this tuples q is the set of finite state sigma is the input alphabet and delta is the transition function q not is the initial state and f is the final state and tau is the step that means uh, the symbols whatever we would like to replace on the tape that indicates the tau and b that means the blank so either we can write b or we can write this symbol blank so here now what is the transition function in the turing machine delta so the transition function for the turing machine is uh, q into tau that means uh, any one of the input symbol in the given tape and here we are taking here the input symbol and tau then either we can either we can move to left or right along with this input that means i am writing right or left this is the uh, transition function for the given turing machine we are moving the tape head at the left or right this is the replacing symbol what you would like to replace this indicates the q indicates the state it is moving from which one state to another state now for this turing machine let me take one example l is equal to the same example i am repeating here how we are going to design the turing machine for this n greater than or equal to 1 here a power n b power n n greater than or equal to 1 for this how we are going to design a turing machine let me explain here so first before that before i am going to the transition function for the turing machine let me show you the tape 
transition how it will be the tape transition so this is i am taking the tape and here i am taking one input string from the given long ways that is i am taking 3 a's and 3 b's this is the input tape of mine so this is the infinite length that's why i am taking the blank space blank blank the remaining are all blanks blank and so on here the remaining are all blanks this it will be like this here now my finite control unit is pointing to my first input symbol each cell is having one input symbol this head it can be moved from either right or left okay now here my finite control unit is that head is pointing to the first input symbol a whenever i am seeing the first input symbol a what i am doing is i would like to replace this a with x a with x and i want to move my finite control to the next position so that means after first transition so i saw that a and i replaced this a with x and my control is forwarded to the next cell then how long you are moving to the next cell in the sense i am moving to here i saw a and i am keeping that a as it is and i am moving to the next so now i saw on the input tape b whenever you saw the input b in my tape this b i am replacing with y okay then after after replacing this b with y i uh, my tape head is moving back why i am moving back here for a single a there is a b is matched so how many number of a's how many number of b's are matched for single a one b is matched so after replacing this b with y my tape is moving backward and now i saw a i am keeping this a as it is and i am moving back again next so now i saw a again so no i am not doing anything this a i am keeping as it is and my tape is moving to left now i saw x whenever you are seeing x now my tape is moving forward that means moving right so now my tape is pointing to my finite control head is pointing to input a whenever i am seeing a here just i am replacing this a with x and i am moving forward so now i saw a again <coughs> i am keeping a again as it is and i am moving right i saw y uh, now i am seeing y and in my in my input tape and i am keeping that y as it is and i am moving to right now i saw b whenever you saw b then replace this b with y and turn back that means you are moving to towards to left now again i am seeing y in my path so whenever you are seeing y in my path i am keeping y as it is and i am moving left again now i am seeing a whenever you are seeing a here that as it is i am keeping a and moving left now i saw x whenever you are seeing x then move right to the control unit finite control unit is moving right now i saw a and remove this and replace with x and move forward until you found the b on your tape now i saw b and make it as y and come back that means move left and move left until you found x so after x i found y whenever you saw y this y is keep as it is and move forward like this until you found blank whenever you found blank that means that is acceptable string then how we are going to design this one as uh, uh, in the diagrammatic representation fashion i would like to show you here f in the sense halt state that means final state halt so when you are going to halt your uh, your mission is uh, whenever you are act that language is accepted by your mission then you are going to be halt that means that language is accepted now i am showing you here the diagrammatic representation now i am in q not see here clearly observe i am in q not initially so in my tape i am showing you in, with the help of input tape how it will be now i am designing here the tape which is having the input a a b 
and again I am writing 3 A's and 3 B's because this is A power N and B power N these are all our blanks here on this side I am keeping it as some blanks and here this side also I am keeping some blanks and so on it will be because this is an infinite tape and this is also and so on infinite tape now initially here I am in Q naught state Q naught state so now my finite control is pointing to any one of the input uh, input symbol in my tape now if I found blank in my input symbol then I would be in the same state B and I'm keeping B as it is and I'm moving right this B B R indicates I found blank on my input tape and I'm keeping my blank as it is and then I'm moving right that means here my tape is pointing to first here B I saw B I'm in the same state I'm keeping this B as it is and I'm moving forward again I saw B I'm keeping the B as it is I'm moving forward so finally my finite control it will be here finite control it will be the head is pointing to the first A now I saw A whenever you saw A I'm moving from Q0 to Q1 I'm moving from Q0 to Q1 then what I'm doing here this A is replaced with X and moving right isn't it we are replacing this A as X and moving to forward now my finite control head is pointing to the next A what we have to do now here I replace this A with X now I have to check is there any B that is matched to this X so if I found in my path any number of A's I don't want to change this A's I'm keeping this A's as it is and I'm moving forward see here I'm writing I found A here so my finite control head is pointing to A I'm keeping A as it is that means I'm keeping A as it is and my tape is moving forward now it is pointing to here for this a again i found a what i'm doing this a i'm keeping as it is and i'm moving right so now my finite control head is pointing to b okay then a's are over now i got b so whenever you are having b i'm changing my state q1 to q2 i'm changing my state q1 to q2 then after b whenever you saw b on my input tape what you are doing this b is replacing with y because a is matched to 1b so i am replacing this a with x and i am replacing this b with y that indicates 1a is matched with 1b so here b and how what it is replaced with the b is replaced with y and then moving what whenever you are changed that y you have to move left that means i found for e i found the matching b so whenever it was completed my tape head is moving to left so i move to left so here in how long you have to move left like this until you found this x so in my path you found yes so here I found A whenever my tape head is moving left I found in my path A here A here so whenever you found A here I'm keeping A as it is and moving left so okay now my control unit is my finite control head is pointing to this again I found A so what I'm doing here I'm keeping A as it is and moving left now my finite control point is pointing to X now here whenever you found x what i'm doing here listen so here x i'm keeping x as it is and moving right and come to the first state q naught that's what i did here this is in the q naught state and i was back here and now until whenever i found x then keep this x as it is and move right now my finite control unit is pointing to A. Now again I found A here. So whenever you found A, what I'm doing? Marking with X and moving right. So this one is marking with X and moving to right. Okay. Now I found again here A. What I'm doing if I found A? 
keep A as it is and move right. Now I am keeping this A as it is and I am moving right. So here whenever I moved right, I found Y. I am not finding B. What I have to do? Until you found B, if there is any Y, you need to skip. That means if Y I found, keep it as Y as it is and move right. So here I found here Y. I am keeping this Y as it is and I am moving right. Now I found B. Whenever you found B, what I am doing here? That B is replaced with Y and move left. So this Y is replaced with Y. Okay, this Y is replaced with Y and move left. So my finite control is pointing to now this one. Okay, now how long you have to move left? Until you found X again. So in my path, I found Y also. If I found Y, I am keeping that Y as it is and moving left. This Y I am keeping as it is and again I am moving left. I found A. What you are doing if you found A? I am keeping A as it is and moving left. Okay, I am keeping as it is A and moving left. Now I found X. So whenever you found X, keep X as it is and move right and go to the initial state. Now here, I am now here pointing to A. Again do the same. I found A. So what I have to do if I found A? Replace that X and move right. Now I am replacing this with X and moving right. Okay. Now I found Y on my tape. If I found Y, keep Y as it is and move right. So I am keeping Y as it is and my finite control is pointing to this Y. Now again I found Y. If I found Y, replace that with y as it is and move right. And now my finite control head is pointing to this one, B. Now I found B. What I have to do? Replace with Y and move left. Now I found B, replace this Y and move left. Now my finite control is in Y. So if I found Y, what I have to do? Y as it is and move left. Now here I am keeping Y as it is and moving left. Again I found Y and keeping, uh, keeping as it is and move left. I am here in X. Now here I found X. Whenever you found X here, I am keeping X as it is and moving right. Now my finite control head is pointing to this Y. But here from Q0, I am seeing input symbol A that input is replacing X and moving right. What it will happen if I saw the input Y? So I am designing one more state. If I found Y, keep it as Y as it is and move right and go for the new state Q3. Now I found Y, keeping Y as it is and moving forward Y. Again I found Y. So if there is any number of Y's and keep it as it is Y and move right. Okay. Now I am here Y and I am moving like this. Then here I found blank. What I have to do if I found blank, stand here, if I find blank here, keep the blank as it is and either you can move left or you can move right. That is the optional case and uh, here I am moving right and then you are going for halting state or you can say that the final state. That means the number of E's are matched to the number of B's. This is called the Turing machine what I designed here. How we are going to write this as a transactions here delta Q0. How I am going to write this diagram representation as instantaneous description here. I am showing you here. So see this diagram delta Q0 Q0 here what is the input I found here B so whenever you found here B what you are going to do here that B as it is you are keeping and then you are moving right so delta Q0 the input symbol is B you are going for Q0 and here I am keeping that B as it is and moving right Q B R that means Q0 and B and moving right if you are having delta Q0 and here if I found here A what do you have to do so here when I found A then you are moving for Q0 to Q1 and then A is replaced with X and moving right then you can also write like this that means you can write is equal to symbols and you can write Q0 X comma R these are the transition functions here I am repeating once again this diagram Q0 whenever you found B in the input symbol input tape keep B as it is and move right 
then whenever you saw the input a replace that a with x and move right so then i am moving from q0 to q1 in this q1 if you found a in the input tape keep that a as it is and move right how long you are moving right until you found b on the input tape whenever you found b on the input tape then replace that b into y and move left why i am moving my head into the left again i need to see is there any a that is matched to b so that's why i'm moving left in my path if you found any a you have to keep that a as it is and move right in my path if you find any y then keep that y as it is and move right then if you found a again then replace that a with x and move right so how long you are moving like this then until you found x again then you are coming back to the initial state so after completion of this all x's is matched to all y's that means all a's are matched to the num number of a's is matched to the number of b's then you can able to see the y once you are seeing the y keep it as it is and move right then you are doing like this and then finally you are reaching to the final state this is called as a halt state this is the way how we are going to design a turing machine so by 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 this process you can be able to perform the arithmetic operations are also in the turing machine for example i would like to explain about how we are performing the addition of two numbers see here how we are performing the addition of two numbers in the given turing machine here i have two numbers i am taking x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 2 i would like to perform the addition of these two numbers 3 plus 2 that is equal to 5 i need to get the number 5 for this how i am going to represent this 3 and 2 in my input tape how we are going to represent here we are the number representation it can be done either for the binary representation or for the unary representation here i am taking the unary representation of a number here how we are going to represent the 3 in the unary format three ones how we are representing the 2 in the unary format two ones i am writing those two numbers with my input tape here i am taking one 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 and then here two more ones here there should be a separator here i am taking zero as a separator so here three ones two ones and zero as a separator i kept here in the input tape now i have the finite control and now this is pointing to one how i am performing the addition here is whenever i am seeing one on my input tape keep one as it is and move forward i found again one move forward and keep it as one as it is whenever i saw zero what i have to do here is replace this zero with one and move forward right so again move forward whenever you saw the blank move backward and make it as a blank see here how many ones are there in my input tape total five that it will be the result that means how many number of input uh, in uh, that is uh, the input is five that was left in my input tape this is the addition of two numbers what i am performing let us see how we are going to design a turing machine for addition of two numbers here i am taking 3 plus 2 that is equal to 5 so initially i am taking q not now i am showing you with the help of input tape this is the input tape three ones and this is a separator and two ones these are the blanks what i have so as we know here i am giving whenever the blank is there keep the blank as it is and move right so my finite control is at now here one whenever the one then keep one as it is and move right okay now i have q not to q1 now i have again i moved forward to here again i saw one even you are saying one keep it as it is and move right now i am having one again and moving right now i found zero whenever you saw the zero what we have to do replace that with zero as one and move right and now i am in q2 right this one this one is replaced with the zero is replaced with one then now i found one if you found any number of ones then what i have to do here is you have to keep one as it is and move right i am moving right 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 then i found blank whenever you found blank what i have to do here is move keep it as blank as it is and move left so i moved left 
than here. What I have to do here in Q3? Here you have to replace this, keep it as it is in the same and replace this 1 as 0. That means 1 is replaced here. That means uh, 1 is replaced here, Q3, and now whenever you found 1, that 1 is replaced with 0 and move either right or left and you are reaching to the final state Q4. That is halt state or final state. If you are observing this diagram, what you understood here is uh, in my input tape here, for example, I am taking 2 ones, 0, 2 ones. So I would like to add 2 plus 2. See my diagram. First, I found 0. Here, I found 1. Whenever you found 1, I am keeping 1 as it is, move forward. Again, I found 1. Keep it as 1 as it is and move forward. Now, I found 0. Whenever you found 0, what I am doing here? Make this 0 as 1 and move forward. That's what I did. Again, I found 1. Make it as 1 as it is and move forward. Any number of ones, you are moving forward. Next, I found blank. Whenever you found blank here, then what I am doing here is, then I am keeping blank as it is and I am moving left. So, after moving left, that 1 I am replacing with 0, right? Or otherwise here, this 1 you have to here 1 comma 0 comma r I wrote here actually if this 1 is making 0 what it will happen this 0 indicates the other meaning that was so because of this reason I would like to make this 0 as blank so instead of 0 I am writing here it as blank so here I kept this one as blank see in my input tape now I have 4 ones that is equal to 4 the 2 plus 2 is 4 that was reached to the final state this is how I am performing the addition of 2 numbers by using the Turing machine. Then you can able to perform the subtraction, multiplication with the help of this Turing machine. Right? Go ahead. Thank you. For more updates, download the KL Radio app on Play Store or visit www.klvradio.com.